While there are many Arduino-based data logger kits available online, I found them all to be disappointingly slow. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a high-speed data logger where you can expect around 30,000 30, samples a second. It is really important to have a high-performance board. The Arduino Uno runs at 16 megahertz, and while that might sound fast enough when you actually start writing data, it's not. The board I recommend is the PJRC TNC 4.1. This board has a 600 megahertz clock speed, a built-in SD card, eight megabytes of data, and a built-in real-time clock. Honestly, this board's a little bit overkill, but it rips, you won't be disappointed. When working with sensors that require communication, I recommend avoiding I2C in favor of SPI. SPI has the downside of needing an extra wire, but in my experience, operates much faster than I2C. If I'm wrong in this, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. A common mistake in data logging is to write sensor values every time you read them. This causes a significant reduction in speed. First, create a struct that stores all the data you need to collect. For example, if you're using an accelerometer to measure X, Y, and Z accelerations, you could use each of those as parameters to your struct. Second, create an array of structs, and once the array is filled, write them to the SD card. This approach allows you to write data less frequently and take advantage of the memory on the microcontroller. Using binary format to save your data will save the microcontroller from having to process and switch between the data formats, making it much faster. Using binary format to save your data can significantly improve the writing speed of your microcontroller as it eliminates the need for your data conversion. You will have to develop custom Python code to extract the data. In my code, because I'm a coder, I have provided an example of how to create an unpacker, which may vary depending on how you design the struct. You can find more information and examples in the repository linked in the video description below. Look how red you are. <laughs> Implementing these methods allowed me from sampling at 100 hertz all the way up to 32 kilohertz, a significant improvement that wasn't well documented. If you achieve faster than 32 kilohertz, please make sure to share it with me. I'd love to see it.